Hi there. So we are going to film a video about processing large batches of potato berries to extract true potato seed. And the first thing you have to do when you're doing this is remove the seed from the berry. And for that, with a big batch, I am going to be using an old meat grinder that my wife bought me at the junk store. So this meat grinder is pretty old. It's kind of like the kind of thing your great grandma would have used. And I wouldn't want to grind a bunch of sausage with it anymore. But it's more than sharp enough to bust up potato berries without destroying the seeds. And I have this screwed on very loosely so there's actually quite a bit of slop here between the plate and the edge of the thing. And the one thing, depending on the size of the berries, like they will squirt out at you, at least with this meat grinder. So I kind of am doing this left-handed just so that I can kind of cover the top of the grinder so it doesn't spray me with potato berry juice in the face, which is quite unpleasant. Now these are, these berries are very ripe. They're quite uh, soft and some of them have gotten, you know, they're moldy. One of the reasons I like using this meat grinder better than a blender is this year I've got such large batches of TPS or such large batches of potato berries that um, I'd have to do multiple blender loads, whereas this is just continuous feed. And I also feel like it's gentler on the seed than a blender, so there's less damage to the seed because you're just very quickly smashing, like this is just kind of thoroughly smashing the berry versus like chopping it up into a bunch of pieces. And that also makes it easier to strain the seeds out, which is, will be the next step. Okay, so that is the entire batch processed. Here you can see kind of it's just a chunky mix of the berries and the seeds and there's quite a few seeds in there. Um, one thing to note, this grinder then with when you're grinding up these berries like that it, it leaks out the back. There's no seal here. So I have this, um, so there's a drip that forms here, so I have this little Tupperware. So the key to this method that is really the, the awesome trick is to sieve out the seeds from the pulp. And I got this idea from Jane Hunter on the Kenosha Potato Project group. And so what you want is some kind of a sieve, and this is like a basket steamer that has holes in it that are larger than than a potato seed so the seeds can you know sift through and this would probably be even a little nicer if there were holes if it was like a colander with this size holes but so if you can find something at the junk store or whatever that works like that but it's a great idea that Jane Hunter had so you just put it in a some other dish and then you just you know transfer your pulp into it and you can see it's a big mixture of seeds and pulp. And I'm just going to rinse it all off. And then, so basically the, the, it's just all seeds and pulp here. And so then we just get, that's too much water. We just get a little bit of water flowing and we just start agitating the mixture and kind of the seeds sort of magically just filter down through and very quickly we'll be left with just potato pulp 
berry pulp. And you know, there will be the occasional bear or seed that's still left in here, but the idea with this many berries that are open pollinated, you're just trying to efficiently extract as much seed as possible as quickly as possible. And this system just works incredibly well. Um, I'm kind of limited by this is the only really good sieve that works well with this system for me. So I'm limited by the volume of this thing. So it's kind of about, about the limit of that baking dish that I have put the, uh, uh, that had ground this, the berries into. So, but you can, I don't know if you can tell yet, but the berries are kind of, the seeds are becoming less, I get these little handle things, which I don't need for this purpose, but, and you may have to, depending on the volume of the container underneath, because you are adding water here, so it may like fill the container and then you'd have to pour some off and keep going until you can see that all the seeds have filtered down. But it actually goes really rapidly. I, I don't know if you can tell how, but like I can see that there's fewer seeds in the pulp already. So this is what it looks like after you've done, filtered it through. And I think you can see there are very few seeds to be seen. Um, I think I just saw one, but the vast, vast majority of the seeds have been washed down into the lower container. So this is basically compost now. And um, here are your seeds. So let me transfer these into a different bowl. So for the process of washing like the seeds and rinsing them, this is a little bit, it's easier to use a curved bottom bowl like this. So now you want to let them settle and then just gently pour off kind of like panning for gold only maybe less exciting and this first few rinses you kind of when it's really murky and green and you can't see the seeds very easily just go gently and don't try and get them completely drained out because you start to lose your seeds, but you can see them starting to appear. So I'm gonna just add some more water. And one of the things to note is right now the seeds are covered in slime and gel. And so the water moves differently than just plain water because there's a lot of slime in it and it will so you can see we're pouring off a lot of chunks of berry flesh here and the seeds are much easier to see you can kind of see see them very easily now but there's lots of small tiny chunks of berry flesh in there so you got to keep pouring and rinsing and pouring and rinsing till you basically have uh, mostly just plain seeds and then you throw it in a very fine colander okay so you can see we've rinsed the seed quite a bit. I'm just gonna transfer it to this colander really quickly. Sorry to my camera woman here, because I'm getting in the way. So, These seeds are pretty, um, pretty nice already, actually. Um, so we'll, 
I'm going to just transfer them directly to the trisodium phosphate. Okay, so we're just gonna, this is the trisodium phosphate solution we made the other day in the other video. Um, you can watch that fascinating video just like millions of other YouTube fans. Uh, and we're just gonna transfer these seeds to the trisodium phosphate 10% solution. And then it spends a grand total of 20 minutes soaking dwell time, if we want to use meaningless jargon, in the trisodium phosphate. And that, the trisodium phosphate is doing uh, all kinds of wonderful cleaning work, removing the gel and the germination inhibitors that are stuck to the seeds let these just soak for 20 minutes and as fun as it is to watch you know seed soak for 20 minutes we will come back in a moment okay so the seed has soaked for 20 minutes and it is ready to strain out and as i said in my trisodium phosphate video you do not want to pour the trisodium phosphate solution down the drain for reasons of saving the planet so we're just going to strain it and i'm going to reserve that trisodium phosphate solution and reuse it let me rinse out so obviously i'm diluting the trisodium phosphate a little bit but as i said in the other video you know you can get by with much dilute much more dilute trisodium phosphate solutions than 10%. So now we have our washed seed and you just want to rinse it a little bit to remove any residual slime. The seed is clean. So when you have this much seed, um, tap it dry on a towel here. What I like to use is a paper towel, or I'm sorry, a paper plate, uh, and just splash out your um, potato seed onto a paper plate and grab any little residual seeds and when you're doing this process obviously you know you're going to lose a seed here or there so this is for this this large batch process is for when you've got a whole bunch of berries to process and that probably means they're open pollinated so you don't have to worry about every last individual seed so then I like to just spread the seeds out kind of like caviar um, just to make them dry a little faster so just to spread them out in a thin layer on this paper plate and then I'm going to pop them in the dehydrator set on about 90 degrees Fahrenheit and they should be dry in 10 hours or so. So that's a pretty healthy amount of seed. And uh, you could grow thousands upon thousands of um, potato seedlings from this much seed. Um, and so it's more seed than uh, I could ever grow out myself. But this seed is going to get donated to the Kenosha Potato Project. Um, and then it's going to be in the beginner seed train for 2019. Okay, so here's the seed dried about 12 hours later. And you can kind of see that it does have like seeds that are stuck together, but you can just quite easily break them up into, you know, 
individual seeds. So there's nothing. The problem with drying the seeds with the gel still on it is the gel will dry and then it acts kind of like a glue. And so all the seeds are essentially clumped together. But here they just turn into free individual seeds with almost no, you know, difficulty. So, um, so we'll just gonna scrape the seeds up, just kind of work them free of each other, and uh, yeah, and bag it up. So that is large batch processing of true potato seed and uh, there's not much to it you just kind of process the seed Thanks for watching.